Tv. Dark Octopus number 122 is an evil mutated octopus that will occasionally drop sushi when defeated. It's unlikely that the sushi is worth eating. Well hello once again and welcome back to Nathan Plays Castlevania Symphony of the Night. My name is Nathan and this is the finale of Castlevania for the Sony PlayStation. In the previous episode, we made our way up uh, to the final area that we're going to explore, the inverted catacombs. Floating catacombs, I guess, if you want to be, uh, you know, picky about things. You will you may have noticed that my percentage of exploration there was 178% in climbing. Um, like I said, way, way early on, that number does end up going a lot higher than you might think at the outset of the game. Um, first thing to do was to test to make sure that my Alucard shield was working, and it was not, so it was time to re-equip the shield rod and cast the spell that turns my Alucard shield into a face-melting weapon of death. Then we carefully put the Alucard sword back on, test the shield, there we go. We're ready for action. We're gonna just head past those witches into the room with all the bats. And instead of going left through the spike area, we're going to go right. Here's a bunch of blood skeletons, the normal ones, not like the scary white ones that we had encountered in the last video, the robot skeletons, if you recall. We've also got a life max up and a heart max up. How nice. Some more frozen halves in this room. I realized I didn't... Uh, I'm not sure if I showed their secondary attack, so we'll get to that in a little bit. Ordinary skeletons just to bet, get in your way. So they can toss an ice ball at you, as you see, which freezes you and is annoying. They may also summon an ice storm, which can be uh, pretty damaging if you're not prepared for it, or get you into a lot of trouble. I think I mentioned last time the music in this area is kind of upsetting. It's uh, probably some of the creepiest in the game. So heading through that uh, very obvious hidden passage, we find the Necklace of J. And it's defense plus five. But unfortunately, it makes me take off my Ring of Pales, which gives me a whole lot of good stats, and so we're just not going to do that. Things like that make me wonder if it has some other hidden property that I'm not aware of. You know, why would, at this late stage in the game, there be a necklace uh, that just gives you plus five defense and, like, nothing else? But, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, we got some green blood skeletons in here. Vulcan skeletons, I guess. You know, on, a <clears throat> on account of their canonically green blood. Anyway. Found a single coin. Very worth going into that room. And uh, to our left, we know that there's a save point. So we're going to grab that real quick. Passing through. There's another diamond. Very nice. But we're going to uh, we're going to just take a little bit of a precaution here. You might remember the barrel circlet that I was ooing and awing over that heals HP by lightning damage, and I said it was going to be very useful later on. Well, this is now later on. Let's see what happens. Yes, it's the uh, penultimate boss of the game, or one of them, Gallimoth. He does uh, balls of magic that do quite a bit of damage. He's very, very large. Uh, unfortunately, not unfortunately, fortunately, they have a very finite range. And he also does a lot of lightning attacks that now heal me. I tried to fly up to see if he could get a bit of his upper body there, get a sense of how big this guy is. And he just can be very difficult to close the distance on and do damage to. Fortunately, his uh, big lightning attacks now do tons and tons of health for me. 
these are pretty much all the things he's going to do. He shoots ball lightning, which is still, I guess, isn't actually lightning. He holds out his scepter and does that. He sort of thwumps me on the head. And he shoots waves of lightning if you try to go up high. So most of his worst effects are now negated completely. And we're going to use the shield. Now, did you notice uh, he also takes a pretty insane amount of damage compared to the other bosses that we fought in this game. So this can be an extremely arduous fight. However, thanks to the Alucard Shield, didn't take long at all. And the Barrel Circlet, big ups to that thing. So one last life max up. Uh, from the bosses, I mean. Do we get a heart and a life? And we have the opportunity to just poke back here into these last couple rooms. There's the Ruby Circlet, as well as the Gas Cloud, entirely optional power-up for your uh, Vampiric Mist form. You'll see it is now a healthy shade of yellow, or green, I guess, if you like. And it does a little bit of damage, so while you're floating through all the enemies that you don't feel like fighting, you're actually going to hurt them a little bit, too. Uh, so then it was time to make my way all the way back through the floating catacombs, which I did. It was not terribly exciting. Then uh, back into the mines here, the lower parts of the mines, so that I could drop down and get to that fast travel point that we showed off last time. We're now heading for the center of the castle. closest way that I can figure to get there is to go to Ulrox's quarters and make my way through that. So now, let's jump up to the clock and see what happens. Ooh, I'm excited. Okay. Any... Any second now. Okay, so at this point I became convinced that I must have missed something, and uh, just that I had forgotten to pick up some crucial item. I thought it was that having all five of the pieces of Vlad, which I do, but was that not it? And so I hopped onto GameFAQs and did a quick look around, and uh, couldn't really seem to find the problem. No, I, I had all the pieces, I, I had everything that I should need. Gallimoth is technically an extra unnecessary boss, but I wanted to show it off. Uh, the answer, though, was a lot more ridiculous than all of that. Yes, it seems I just wasn't standing on the exact spot to trigger the cutscene. I took one step to the left, and now here we are. So yes, the clock once again strikes 13, just like the uh, in the regular Upright Castle. And for the 13th video in this series, which I think, you know, uh, uh, planned, definitely, definitely planned out from the beginning. We get one last save point. And of course, we're going to scoot across the way there. And get a heart refresh. Not that I feel like we're super going to need it at this point. So it's time to head on to the heart of the castle once again. Creepy music in full effect. Pentagrams, check. But instead of taking an elevator up from the bottom, we're going to drop in from the top. Almost forgot to put my dragon helm back on. You have done well in making it this far. I would expect no less from the son of our master. So you are the one who is controlling Belmont? Yes. I am the Dark Priest called Shaft. 
This world must be cleansed in the forge of chaos. Why did you make Belmont lord of this castle? For centuries, vampire hunters have defeated evil with holy power. But if two vampire hunters were to fight each other... But Belmont's power is supreme among vampire hunters. None other could defeat him. Exactly. That's why I removed him as a threat, by making him into lord of this castle. But your plan has failed. Has it indeed? We'll see what happens after I destroy your weak human side. Oh, whoa, okay. Them's fighting words. So Shaft rises up into his orb, summons a bunch of smaller orbs, and begins his attack. He likes to work in different elements, and uh, is going to have a bunch of different things. So there's the bouncing, there's the pillars of fire you saw. Kind of a, maybe I should have left the barrel circle it on after all. But uh, thank, thank goodness those are only doing one damage a piece. Oh, no! You claim to love the darkness. Go then and dwell there for all eternity. But my goal is achieved. Count Dracula has come to purify this corrupt world with the searing flames of chaos. <laughs> Father. Well met, my son. It's been a long time. I was hoping we would not see each other again. I can't allow you to leave here, father. You have ever been the ally of humans. Have you forgotten what they did to your mother? Think you I would forget such a thing? No, but neither do I seek revenge against them. Still uttering the same nonsense. No matter. Now is the time to put aside your weak human side and join me in remaking this world! Dracula, in the name of my mother, I will defeat you again! Behold my true form and despair! And so the final fight begins with rather a terrifying, uh, alien demon claw creature. Uh, obviously I've gotten myself into a pretty bad position right off the hop. Uh, with that thing on the side, he's gonna summon different creatures and splatter them for his own power. And, uh, he's got quite a few different attacks. I tried to showcase most of them. The alien heads are gonna bite, you know, the claws. He's trying to shoot triangles at me, because that's kind of neat. But uh, gradually, I was running out of health, and I felt like it was time. Time to end it. And so, out comes the shield. Go back whence you came. Trouble the soul of my mother no more. How? How? How is it that I've been so defeated? You have been doomed ever since you lost the ability to love. Ha. Ah. Sarcasm. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the world and loses his own soul? Matthew 1626, I believe. Tell me, what, what were Lisa's last words? She said, do not hate humans. If you cannot live with them, then at least do them no harm, for theirs is already a hard lot. She also said to tell you that she would love you for all of eternity. Lisa, forgive me. Farewell, my son.
So you made it. Alucard, I'm glad you're all right. I'm sorry. Tis my fault you had to fight your own father. Fear not. I had my own reasons for destroying him. It must have been painful for you. Indeed. But you must always remember that the only thing necessary for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. I understand. Alucard, what will you do now? The blood that flows in my veins is cursed. Twould be best for this world if I were to disappear forever. I see. Farewell, then. We'll not meet again. Alucard? Don't you want to go after him, Maria? No. It's best this way. I can't ease his torment. Someday, perhaps, we will meet again. And on that day, maybe. I see. Let's go. Everyone's waiting for us. Yes, let's get out of here. And so, we once again reach the credits of the game. And some glorious smooth jazz. That was Castlevania Symphony of the Night. We have this time fully earned our rendition of I Am the Wind, so I'll stop talking shortly. But uh, I just want to say once again, thank you all so much for watching. It's a lot of fun to do these, and I hope you enjoyed uh, following along with the adventure. Um, next up, as I've mentioned, we're going to do Chrono Trigger. And uh, like I did say at the beginning of the game, there's a ton of secrets and Easter eggs, um, many of which we never got to. I'm going to leave a link to the uh, Castlevania Symphony of the Night Wikia page, which has a pretty comprehensive uh, list of them. If you want to check that out, it's pretty interesting stuff. So many little touches that just make this game a lot of fun to play. Um, there's a really good port of it for the Xbox Live. Um, I think PSN still has it. Shouldn't be too hard to track down a copy if you want to try it for yourself. Anyway, uh, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next mission.
So if you left the video playing this long, uh, you'll notice the music abruptly stopped because uh, probably, probably because it's an old disc and it's scuffed and the, the song literally did just stop while I was recording it. So if you waited around for this long, uh, why don't I show you something else that's kind of cool about this game. So as I mentioned once or twice, completing the game does confer certain bonuses to you. Um, on a playthrough, uh, if you do it a second time, you get to skip certain cutscenes, you get more items in the shop. But you can also go back, start a new file, and enter your name as Richter. R-I-C-H-T-E-R. Again, this only works after you've completed it once. Start the game this way, after the brief loading screen, which is still fun to mess with. And you get dropped at the beginning of the castle. You skip the prologue, and you get to play through the entire game, including Inverted Castle, as Richter Belmont. He does not uh, level up or collect items. Um, he has a pretty robust skill set, though. He's a little squishier than Alucard, uh, so you have to be a little more careful. Life max ups don't really do anything except give you, uh, I don't know, points or something. And you can see it says rest OO. That means I'm all, I have one. This is my only life. But you do still have access to save points. You don't have to do it all in one clear. He does a decent amount of damage that I believe scales as you play through the game and explore more areas. And of course, you can pick up his different sub weapons and use those to good effect. But it's just kind of a neat thing. It's a whole second play through the game. It really changes how you approach certain bosses and situations. And it's actually a lot of fun to do. So there you go. Just thought I would show you that. Once again, thanks for watching. See you next mission.